are cheapskate alternatives. The G63 from earlier costs 130 grand. But there are some cheaper choices if you're after a car from Merck's AMG tuning arm. Eye-watering performance, Germanic solidity, and an exhaust note to wake the dead. These can be had from just three and a half grand. First, a bargain basement Uber saloon, the E55 AMG. The W210 E55 AMG was produced between 1998 and 2002, and it kicked out 354 horsepower. It'll still get the 60 in under six seconds. This is such a good springboard into the world of AMG ownership. It's always thought of the black sheep of the AMG family, really, because it didn't have the build quality. However, there's no denying it's still got a near bulletproof engine under the bonnet. It's still rear wheel drive. It's still mighty comfortable. And when you want it to, it'll go. But that is still a proper piece of German muscle. When you take one of these out for a test drive, try and find a few potholes and listen for some clonking coming from the suspension because these cars were notorious for wearing out their drop links. Budget about 150 quid to have them done. Try and get the car up onto a ramp. These W210 models, AMG or not, love to rust. Pretty much everywhere. For starters, at the front, the subframe likes to rust. The top mount of the front springs, they go there. Behind this body kit on the sills, the bottoms of the doors, and these arches, front and rear. The value of these cars really is in the bodywork, so look so carefully. Listen out for any clonking sounds when you roll off the gas on the car, or even when it's just sitting idling. That's a telltale sign that the engine mounts have gone, and these cars are notorious for killing their engine mounts. The engine mounts are really difficult to see. The passenger one is in there. They look like this. The rubber there starts to disintegrate, and the fluid can then come out. You've got to replace them as a pair, ideally. To have them both done, including parts and labour, is going to cost you about 300 quid. The E55 Saloon is a proper bargain, but spend three grand more and you could get yourself a svelte AMG coupe. This is Mercedes W209 CLK 55 AMG. Now, they made this between 2002 and 2006. It's got 367 horsepower under the bonnet. It's a normally aspirated 5.4 version. Similar engine to what's in the E55. This thing will get to 60 in less than five seconds. The direct competitor for the CLK55 when new was BMW's M3. And a lot of the reviews pointed towards the M3 being a sharper tool on the track. But as a more rounded car, I think this probably wins because this is a bit more comfortable and this is a bit more composed as a sort of 365 day sport vehicle. This has more bang for your buck. And I like bang for my buck, especially when it's German and it's V8. But there are a few things to look out for. Check the engine restarts easily, as any hesitations or stalling points towards a problem with the crankshaft position sensor, which will cost you 100 quid. Not a lot, but it's hassle you don't want. Finally, replacing simple consumable parts like the tyres and the brakes can really add up. On this car, for a set of discs and pads on the front, you're talking 370 quid. And for the back end, 250. If you're tempted by the facelifted model of this, it comes with two piece discs. And they're a thousand quid per end. Scary. Next, the ultimate AMG bargain, an SL55. Back in 2002, the SL55 AMG went on sale from a whopping 89,000 quid. I actually remember driving one when they were brand new. So it's even more shocking to get into one now and see how well, A, it's aged, and B, see that I could be driving away on one for 15,000 quid. What an astonishing car for the cash. 
This car has the same 5.4 litre V8 as the CLK55. Difference is, this has now got a supercharger bolted on top, so it's forcing that air in, and as a result, you get a little bit more power and a hell of a lot more torque. 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds. At the back, you're getting bellow. At the front, you're getting wine from that supercharger. I would love to own something like this. I really would. The SL55 has active suspension, which uses a hydraulic fluid system to maintain a level ride. Check for dashboard warning lights and that the ride height is even. These struts here are known to sometimes leak and fail. You want to look underneath for any signs of hydraulic fluid accumulating, because if one of these does need to be replaced, it's going to cost £1,000. Check the roof mechanism is smooth and quiet, as it can get knocked out of alignment. And while it's up, pop the boot open. Check the boot area for damp. Now, the SL's back window is bonded in next to this huge rubber seal across here. That lets rain in, and the rain collects down there underneath the boot floor. But underneath the boot floor just happens to also be the hydraulic pump, which operates this whole collapsible hardtop. If that gets rain damaged, you're talking a thousand pounds to replace it. So, if you can't afford the 130 grand Mercedes G63 AMG, fear not. Get one of these German muscle cars instead.